What is that in this patient's brain? So this is the MRI scan of a 40-year-old female who's involved in an auto accident. She was driving through a parking lot and hit a parked car that was on the left side of her. She states she's actually been in several small fender benders over the past few months. She endorsed some neck pain and some headaches, so a typical trauma workup was done, including a CAT scan of her brain, which showed this. This is the axial view CT showing a large lesion in the right occipital lobe with surrounding edema. This is also resulting in midline shift. On her physical exam, she was neurologically intact with the exception of some visual loss on the left side. Now, because of this finding, an MRI of her brain was performed and it showed this. This is an axial MRI with contrast. On the coronal view, it actually takes up a quarter of the inside of her skull. So my questions are, what in the world is this thing? Is not relevant to her auto accident? And then what do we do about it? Stay tuned tomorrow and I'll run through the entire case and the solution for you. Yesterday, I presented the case of a 40-year-old female who was involved in an auto accident, and this was her MRI scan. Essentially, she presented to the emergency department after she struck a parked vehicle on her driver's side. I mentioned that she has had several fender vendors over the past few months, and she complained of headaches. This was an MRI scan of her brain that showed a large enhancing mass in her right occipital lobe, seemingly arising from the dura, or the covering of the brain right here. The covering of our brain is called the dura or the meninges, and many of you guys got this answer right. This is a meningioma. Now, meningiomas are usually benign tumors that arise from the meninges or the covering of the brain, and they grow really slowly. So this patient has likely had this tumor growing in her brain for many years, and because of where it was located, it started compressing on the right occipital part of her brain, causing the visual field loss on the left side. So her vision over the years started slowly getting worse and worse and worse to the point where she could no longer see out of the left side. Kind of crazy, huh? What causes something like this? Like most things in medicine, we're not 100% sure on what causes meningiomas, but we do know some risk factors. Prior radiation treatments to the brain can increase your risk of a meningioma. We know that they're more common in females, and some studies have suggested a hormonal component to the development of meningiomas. We know that obesity can increase the risk of development of meningiomas, although the relationship is not totally clear. A rare genetic component of neurofibromatosis type 2 can also increase the risk of the development of meningiomas. So now what? We remove it. Now, some surgeons would embolize a tumor this size, where basically we can go in and decrease the blood flow to the tumor to make surgical resection more safe. A tumor this size with these symptoms definitely needs to be removed. As I showed you guys on this coronal MRI, this thing is enormous, and it was actually the size of a baseball. So we can remove a portion of the skull, remove the dura where this uh, tumor originates from, and then circumferentially define the border between the brain and this tumor, and then remove it all in one piece. This tumor did turn out to be completely benign, and the patient was cured. Here is the patient's postoperative MRI three months later, showing complete resection and removal of the tumor. In her case, the meningioma was completely benign and her vision returned to normal after several months. I'll see you guys next Sunday for another case. So how does a brain surgeon remove a tumor like this? Remember from last week's case, we discussed that this type of tumor is called a meningioma or a benign tumor that typically grows on the covering of the brain called the dura. So here's an animation video on how we would remove this type of tumor. So here's how we do a surgery like this. We make an incision overlying the region of where the tumor is located. We often use navigation using image guidance to help us delineate where the incision will be made. We first reflect the skin overlying the tumor and make small holes overlying where we want the bone removed. We then connect this with a drill to remove the skull and then reflect the dura. Once the dura is exposed, we can localize the region where the tumor is located. We can then debulk the inner contents of the tumor and then circumferentially dissect around the tumor, differentiating between normal brain and the tumor. Once we delineate all the borders of the tumor, we then can subsequently remove the tumor. We then reflect the native dura back and close it in watertight fashion, replace the skull with skull plates, and then close the skin. 
Of course, this video is very idealistic and often it's not quite as simple as that, but you get the point. Sometimes these meningiomas can grow into the brain or around structures surrounding the brain, which can make it more challenging. But essentially, that's how you remove a meningioma.